In this episode, we're going to be talking about the man convicted of killing seven women in Kansas City, Missouri. Ever heard of Terry Blair? I'm going to tell you all about him. Terry Blair was born on September 16th, 1961. Now, this man was born into a large family, okay? His mama had 10 kids, Blair being the fourth eldest of the 10 kids. Mama was busy, all right? She did, although suffered from mental illness. She also wasn't very educated, never finishing school, dropping out in the ninth grade. The family was also extremely poor. Now, this family was notorious with law enforcement. And when I say notorious, I don't use that term lightly. Pretty much the whole damn family was constantly in trouble with the law, with a plethora of charges. Now, let's start with the mother because she gave birth to Terry. He's the reason why we're having this video right now. When Blair was 17, he was woken up in a terror because his mother Janice shot and killed her then drug dealing boyfriend. She was charged with second degree murder and entered into an offered plea, which basically means she doesn't admit to the criminal act and asserts innocence regardless of evidence presented in court. She was given five years probation and with the condition that she received counseling, therapy, and psychiatric treatment. Because remember I told you the bitch is crazy now just six months later his brother walter blair allegedly killed 16 year old sandy shannon because of this he was charged with robbery assault and capital murder but check this out the case was dropped after a witness refused to testify and he was set free and what happens next is just truly horrifying. On August 19th, 1979, Walter Blair kidnapped, shot, and killed 21-year-old Catherine Jo Allen. He was paid $6,000 to kill her because she was the victim of a rape and the suspect needed her to keep quiet. So, in his mind, it was a good idea to kill her. Yeah, I'm not seeing how that is a good solution to the horrible crime that your partner created. He was charged with murder and was sentenced to death and was executed 14 years later at the age of 32. And that was only just a sample of things this family did. Also arrested in the family was his sister, Juanetta Blair, who was charged for the murder of James Bell after his body was found with more than 30 stab wounds. Her husband, who by the way, has something to do with the man that was stabbed 30 times, yeah, he was found murdered by his son and nephew-in-law. So, there are a lot of fucking problems here. This family is ridiculous. But check this out, we're not done. I failed to mention, however, that Warnetta was given a second degree murder charge for the 30 stab wound victim and was only sentenced to 12 years in prison, which means she ain't gonna be in there long. And she did her time and was released. But the theme of this family is crime. So crime happens because they're a family that does crime. She gets out of jail and she kills her new boyfriend, Pablo Gomez, and his body was found bound and gagged. Y'all, that was only a sample of a plethora of crimes that stem from this family. I really could make an entire video covering this entire family. The worst one was yet to come. And that brings us to the MVP of today, the prospect killer, Terry Blair. While his family went on to become killers, he decided he was gonna start a family. He had two kids, both boys, one named Terry Blair Jr., that poor child, and Marcel Johnson with baby mama Angela Monroe. But dark days were soon to be coming, and they came. One night in 1982, Blair kills his baby mother of two because she was prostituting herself. He was given 25 years in prison, but he only served 21 years in prison and was released on parole. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Because I'm not a know-it-all. But as far as I'm concerned, jail is supposed to be this rehabilitation for those who are in there, you know what I mean? But that is not the case for this family because the theme is murder. That's what he does. On the night of September 2nd, 2004, 911 received a call about a foul odor coming from an abandoned home and also stated seeing that there were two women bodies. The next day, 911 received a call from somebody claiming to be the killer of those of the bodies that were found the previous day. So the next day, they got another call 
from the same voice giving them more details about another set of bodies near a highway and promised to call again about more crimes. However, he stopped contacting 911 after a news station leaked information about the caller saying he was using a cell phone. Now that's important because cell phones can be used to ping. Police found several additional murder victims, one they had earlier classified as a drug overdose. So now it's becoming obvious that there's a killer on the loose. You have all these bodies showing up and you have someone calling in to the 911 dispatch center claiming to be the killer. All the victims were found in a small radius near Prospect Avenue. All the victims were strangled to death and their necks had been snapped. It was worth noting to investigators that the women that were killed were prostitutes. Now that's important because Blair lived in the area and confessed previously to police that he killed his baby mama because she was doing that kind of work. Also, he matched the description given to investigators by someone who survived an attack by Blair. His family was notorious for gruesome crime he had already done time for murder and he lived in the area investigators were not able however to ping blair directly to the cell phone used because the cell phone had been stolen and had been used to make more 911 calls the call tower however did establish that the calls originated near where blair lived blair was initially arrested on a parole violation after he failed to keep in contact with his probation officer but then he was later charged for homicide. Detectives felt they had enough to charge Blair given the evidence that they had. He also was connected to a number of sexual assaults and rapes in the area. His charge was changed to eight counts of first degree murder. One count of first degree assault and three counts of forcible rape was also charged to Blair. But later on, two of the murder charges were dropped and the rape and assault charge was also dropped. The evidence they had was mainly circumstantial. Blair's DNA, however, was found on a victim, Sheila McKenzie. But Blair's defense to this was that it only proved he had engaged in sexual activities with the individual. It didn't prove that he killed her. The prosecution countered this, saying that she didn't tie herself up after the intercourse, which means Blair had to do it or someone had to do it because who the hell is going to tie themselves up after having sex? Blair denied making the 911 calls as well, but the judge ruled that with the evidence provided that Blair's voice did match the one played in court. So he was found guilty in 2008 and was sentenced to six life sentences with no possibility of parole. Blair continues to this day to deny responsibility for the crimes and appealed the conviction in 2009, but of course, it was denied. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any suggestions, put them down in the comment section, and I will catch all of you guys in the next video. Peace.